All right, Charles, let's just start with the title of the book, The Last Enforcer. How much did you embrace that role of being the guy who was going to protect his teammates throughout your 18-year NBA career? Yes, uh, the whole time, the 18 years of uh, just being a leader and make sure everybody around me was okay. Uh, growing around my grandfather in the book, I talk about him, who I got some of that heart and soul from to be a leader, yes. Some of these stories are well known. I mean, you start right off the bat with the incident with uh, Charles Barkley during the lockout. Obviously, James Dolan was played out in the public eye. What do you think is the one story in your book that's going to make the reader and the Knicks fans say, whoa, I didn't know that happened? Well, <laughs> yeah. Uh, wow, that's a tough question. Good question. Um, I mean, all of them is, is, you know, it's true stories. So I think the one going to stand out is probably – the one, maybe uh, the Judge Mappers, the Tyrone Hill, they probably gonna stand out. Uh, the Barkley, like I said, we all know about that. And um, But it's a lot of engagement in this book. Charles, your feud with Charles Barkley, as I mentioned, played out in the public eye. It happened, it started right there at Madison Square Garden. What does it mean to you, ownership aside, that you don't go back to Madison Square Garden and see Nick fans? Um, I mean, I love Nick's fans. In this book, I talk about that. Uh, they made me who I am today in a way for us basketball, cheering for me every night. And I try to give 100% every night, my heart and soul on the court. Uh, I love the fans, but the garden is the garden. One day, you never know what happened. Now, in your feud with James Dolan, I think it's safe to say almost all New Yorkers were on your side. Uh, after that, you've been critical of Patrick Ewing. You're critical of him in the book saying, you know, you guys never really went out to eat that much and that the Knicks never had a true number one star. He was a number two. Why jeopardize your goodwill with Nick fans by criticizing Patrick Ewing? I'm not jeopardize myself uh, with the fans. The fans, if you know basketball, you know the truth. You watch the game. If you boo somebody or holler somebody, if you don't know what you're doing, why do it? Um, I know what I'm talking about. I played the game. I played 10 years with Patrick. Um, I mean, I'm not the only one probably who said something about the game, the way he played it. I think we played it more of himself, with himself, not with the team. But, hey, it's, that's my point of view. The coaches call the plays, and we just play the game. When you look back on those 10 years with the Knicks and how close you came so many different years to winning a championship, is there one game that you think about the most? Is there one game that if you and the Knicks could do differently or one moment that maybe might have propelled you guys to a championship, what is it? I mean, game six, game seven against Houston. I mean, we was right there. I mean, we there, let's talk about it. So, I mean, we came home, we won two out of three, we won the you know, one out of two in Houston, came home, one, two out of three, went back to Houston. We lost both games. Uh, I think we didn't adjust well enough as a team to uh, what Houston was doing. Basically the same type of team, you know, in, in and out. Keen, the larger one, Patrick, we go. I think Keen was a guy who could carry a team because he made all the right plays. He passed out the post to a, a rookie, Sam Cassell, for a big three in that series, and he hit the shot. And, uh, and our guy was shooting uh, fadeaways in double teams, hurting the team. Charles, there's a generation of Knicks fans who never had a chance to see you play. They know you through these stories that you detail in the book. But from reading this book, what do those fans who never saw you play learn about you as a player? My consistency of what I, I talk about, uh, how I played the game, how I went out every game, no matter what it was, rain, sneak or shine, I played the same way. Um, I'm a true guy. Uh, uh, I'm just a gender guy on the court, off the court. I'm the consistent, just a consistent over life. I think that when you consistency, and I think I've been that way from telling stories or podcasts. And that's why I wanted to do this book. Let the fans see me in my own element, or uh, telling stories, or uh, uh, reading the book, how I was brought up, and they can they can judge me like, wow, okay, he been through a lot. He still will be able to go out and play ball in a physicality way and didn't, didn't blame nobody else. I didn't blame nobody else for my upcoming or whatever. I just, once I signed the contract, I put my heart and soul into it. And there are certainly a ton of stories in this book. The book is called The Last Enforcer by Charles Oakley, available now for all Nick fans and basketball fans to get and read. Charles Oakley, thanks for joining us here on SNY. Thank you.